One of the most common mistakes supervisors and managers make is failing to clearly establish expectations. In a hectic workplace, it can be very tempting to assume that a performer can pick up on things without much explanation or conversation. But when this happens, supervisors and managers open themselves up to difficulty down the road. What seems easier at first becomes problematic later on. One of the best habits you can adopt is the practice of taking essential time up front to clearly establish expectations and performance measures. This will save you time in the end. Furthermore, performers will become competent more quickly. Most people naturally want to do the work correctly and do it well. Of course, a key word in this statement is most. Unfortunately, not everyone is willing to perform. Occasionally, due to a lack of commitment or a bad job fit, people who do not want to perform must be weeded out of the workplace. The skills and best practices covered in this course do not address such a situation. Rather, our basic assumption is that the people you will be using these skills to coach want to be in their job. They want to perform. And you value their performance enough to clearly set expectations and then coach to those expectations. Even though we will examine what to do when performance is not meeting expectations, we are assuming that the person being coached is someone you want on your team, someone whose efforts are worth your own coaching effort. There are then four situations in which it is important to clearly set performance expectations. First, when an employee is adjusting to a new job. Next, when delegating a task or responsibility. Next, when adding new accountabilities to a job. And fourth, when setting new priorities for an employee. The first two are not overlooked very often. It's obvious that when an employee is new in a job role, some sort of training or coaching is necessary. Even though the person may be an existing employee, when he or she enters a new position, most organizations will have some sort of training and orientation process in place. And obviously, if the performer is a new hire, job training is a critical part of the onboarding process. If the performer is being handed a new task or responsibility, it is also commonly understood that he or she will require an understanding of that task or responsibility. More commonly missed is the setting of expectations in the second two situations. For someone who is already in a job and is simply being handed new accountabilities or new priorities, it is equally as important to have a clear understanding of expectations and measures as it is for newly hired personnel. Fundamentally, the time to apply the steps we are about to cover is any time something changes in terms of the results a performer is expected to deliver. Now we'll take a look at the five keys for effectively setting performance expectations. Fill in the blanks on the worksheet you printed out as each key is shown in the next PowerPoint slideshow.